Hello, my name is Aran, and welcome to part 10 of my Roll20 Master series. This one is about what probably GMs love the most, NPCs. Managing an NPC is very easy once you've had it all set up. Like I've shown you in the token video, once it's on the board with HP and everything, you can just move it around as any other token, you use the token actions at the top, and have fun as you will. In this video, we're going to talk about how to create an NPC from scratch. There are two main ways to create an NPC, using the compendium or building it yourself from scratch. If an NPC is a very generic NPC, something that is in the SRD, or if you've bought material on Roll20, you can just go find it in the compendium. For example, I want an owlbear, I open the compendium, get me an owlbear. Then you get an NPC character sheet, all set up, just have to use the macro generator to create the actions. For an owlbear it's very easy. I recommend using Whisper to GM for anything you don't want the party to know, or anything you don't want to show up in the chat when you click it. Then you can just add the image for the character sheet, make sure it's all correct, Albert is a large creature, all of this. Do not set light emission on generic NPCs. Update the default token, and if you haven't exported this creature yet, save it. Then you can just delete the token on the board, and the next time you drag it from the journal, you have an Albert. Just roll for hit dice, and the monster is ready to play. Now I'm going to show you how to create a creature from scratch using the most complicated NPC I could think of, Niv Mizet, a gargantuan ancient CR26 spellcasting dragon. You can start creating an NPC by clicking add and choosing a character, or click on any folder you want it in and select add character. It's basically the same. Then you get this, the edit portion of the character sheet. Grab your pre-prepared image, toss it in there, give your NPC a name, tag it if you want. If you want and the character has some extra knowledge in the books, you can just put it here. Make sure you do it in the GM notes so only you can see it. Or type in the bio anything you want other people with the view permission to see. Save it and that's what you get. Then you go to the character sheet and you have a regular PC character sheet. Now you do something that PCs aren't supposed to do, and click this to set this as an NPC. Now you have an NPC stat block. The name should be the name you decided for that character. This will be the name shown in the journal. This will be the name in the chat when this creature is shown in chat. The second field is for type. Copy the type. Then you get armor class. Enter hit points and formula. All the speeds it has. Then enter the attributes. Enter here any saves, make sure you write the full number, which is the ability plus proficiency, if, it you if you have them, not just proficiency, because that's the number that's going to be rolled. Same thing goes for skills. Next step is vulnerabilities, if it has any, resistances, immunities, any condition immunities, all the senses it has, spoken languages, and the challenge rating. XP will be calculated automatically. Then set the token size, 1 is for medium, 2 is for large, 3 for huge and 4 for gargantuan. Then select if this is a spellcasting NPC. You will get a few more spellcasting fields. Niv Mizet uses intelligence and is a 20th level caster. If the NPC has reactions, set this checkbox. It just adds another section after actions, right here. If it's a legendary creature, type in the number of legendary actions. This will add the legendary actions section. The new Mythic Odysseys of Theros added a new option of Mythic Actions, and here you can type in the rules, and then you have Mythic Actions here, which you can add. Here are some general options. I recommend to always roll advantage, easier on the GM, and also auto-roll damage and crit, and choose whether to whisper or not, because I like to have my players see everything that's going on, but sometimes I want to hide certain things. And I also hide the name of whatever NPC it is until they actually know it. And always add Dex Tiebreaker. Now that we're done with the basics, let's get to the nitty gritty. Here you have the option to set it NPC or not. Do not touch it because this is an NPC. You've already set it. Do know that if you take a PC and turn it into an NPC, or take an NPC and turn it into a PC, then some data in the character sheet will remain and not deleted. So make sure you check that, delete what you don't want before you save or move it about. Now we add the features. Just click plus right underneath the basic stats, type in whatever you want, Close it, and there you have it. Clickable and usable in chat. Do the same for every other feature, and you'll end up with this. Then we go over to actions, which work roughly the same thing. An action can be as simple as a name and a description. 
or it can be an attack with um, a type, range, to hit value, targets, on hit damage 1 and 2, and you can even add a description, for example, if you would need to roll a constitution save to avoid poison. If I needed to add, for example, the imp's poison feature on the sting, I would do it like this. Just in the description, write in anything that isn't the attack itself, and if there's damage or anything else to roll, put it in double brackets, and it will roll itself when it hits the chat. And when you're done, this is how your actions should look like. Legendary actions work the same as actions. You can have it just a name in the description or a full-blown attack. And that's it for legendary actions. Now, as for spells, these work the same as it did for character sheets. You can just drag and drop whatever you have available in the compendium or type it out yourself. Luckily for me, Niv Mizet uses only SRD spells, so this was easy. Otherwise, you can just open them and edit them like you did when you were building a PC. Next, we go to the macro generator and generate the macros. Since Niv Mizet is a 20th level spellcaster, I decided to go with a mega folder for spells, but I did keep the actions and legendary actions out so I can add a few things, like hiding what the multi attack exactly does, so I can add the recharge check at the end of the fire breath. I've also added Whisper to GM for all the actions because I don't want the players to see them, and you can add various other things you want to the macros if it makes things easier for you. Then I go over to the token editor and make sure the image is correct, the name, show nameplate, Niv Mizet is a gargantuan dragon. I did set light emission and connected HP because Niv Mizet is a unique character. Then you just set visibility. Don't forget to update default token. And that's it. And the next time you need Niv Mizet on the field, drag him over. You have your dragon, set the hit dice. And you're good to go. All the actions up here. If you use the GM actions, I recommend you add to the collection. You also have the basic set. And that's it. So thank you for watching this whole series, if you did. And I hope you decide to follow me, subscribe, or whatever. And definitely share this around, because I've seen a lot of GMs and players who could use some help using Roll20. So thanks again, and I hope to see you around the interwebs. Bye-bye.